My hope is that it interprets this vocal melody that I've sung as a trumpet. <laughs> Good. Hey everyone, and welcome to the official Suno YouTube channel. My name is Luke, and we are kicking things off with some incredibly exciting news today. And here to help me break it all down, I am thrilled to be joined by the man behind the magic, Henry Phipps. Just one, just one of the many <laughs> magic people behind Studio. Yes. Now, your title here is PM of Studio, but I have it on good authority that you collect obscure flutes. I do collect obscure flutes from various parts of the world. I think I have two flutes from Peru, two that are like classic Irish flutes. Flutes, they've got, they've got the breath, you know? That's you record amazing. a flute onto something and you immediately imbue it with life. For everybody watching here, this is gonna be our first look at Suno Studio. So let's just jump directly into Suno Studio here. Can you just show us the different ways to begin a project in Studio? I hear you can start with just a voice note or a single sound. So I've got Suno Studio open right now. Um, there are a bunch of different places you can start. And I think something that's gonna come up over and over again is Suno Studio is a very flexible tool with a lot of different ways to use it. So I'm gonna show you a few ways I like to use it, but the people out there are gonna discover all sorts of new workflows and things. But you can drag in your own audio right onto the timeline. You could record right onto the timeline, um, or you can start with a song that you've made in Suno and bring that into the timeline. Right. Let me start with this track. It's called Got To See You Then. And I'm just gonna click and drag it from my library right onto the timeline. And I should mention that these two sections over here, uh, we've just borrowed from the conventional Suno create page where you've got your create form on the left and then you've got your workspace right next to it. So this is kind of your library of music. So immediately when you pull a track onto the timeline and I'm gonna click one and two to close those two windows, you can see that we've got all these vertical lines. These represent musical bars. So we've gone ahead and Suno has analyzed all of the downbeats in this track and everything is automatically gonna line up on the grid so that as you start to combine different audio elements, they should fit together nicely in a musical way. So let's go ahead and preview this. I love it already. Yeah. And then we got some drums. Cool. So, I mean, right off the bat, if I wanted to shorten that intro or something, I could just delete this region of time and delete it and I can drag this around. So for anyone who's used a digital audio workstation before, this will feel familiar, but I'm gonna undo that because I love that intro. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the place that I usually start is by splitting a track into stems. So if I double click this title here, um, it'll pull up this info panel on the right and you can see that I've already gone ahead and extracted all of the stems of this track. And you can even extract the stems for songs that you've uploaded or recorded into Studio. And if I click this insert all button, all the stems will populate right below. So now we can explore our session a little bit. We've got, here are our drums, vocals, and then synth. Cool. So, and how are you uh, muting and soloing those? It looks like you have some buttons to Yeah, mute. I'm using keyboard shortcuts here. Uh, okay. Command shift S to solo, command shift M to mute. But you can also just go ahead and click these buttons on the left. Solo is the S and then to mute, you just click that speaker icon and uh, that'll turn the track right. Very cool, just like a regular DAW. Just like a regular DAW, exactly. One thing I like to do is I like to create covers of songs using Suno. So you can see I've already created a bunch um, and I made this one that was a slightly different vibe. And I think I prefer the drums from this version, uh, even though I like the vocal of the original best. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on the cover that I've created, go ahead and drag these new drums right onto the timeline. And I'll align these right next to the old drums so we can hear. And let's just listen to the difference between these two. Cool. So you can hear there's a distinct sonic difference there. I'm gonna go ahead and split the clip using Command E, and I'm gonna keep the uh, old drums for the main chorus, but I'm gonna use the softer drums for the first verse. Gotcha. So now our track sounds like this. Bro, friends, and my rent is overdue, and I make a couple lambs, I got 
So this is just one example of pulling in a stem from another track. Right. You could, I could make a bossa nova version of this and then just pull in the guitar or something. And then I also have other audio editing capabilities. So if I were to pop in here. I like this little vocal thing that's happening. And then maybe I want another one of these to happen right here. And maybe I, I want it to go to a different note. Bah, bah, maybe there. So I'll pitch it up a little bit. So let's listen to that in context. Very cool. Well, yeah. These are a few of the classic audio editing features that let you create composites of your songs and start to get a little bit more expressive with what you're making. Right. One of the features in studio is the ability to create a new music track. So say we wanted to have something like a guitar solo, how would we be able to draw in a new instrument here? This is one of the things I think that's going to be most unique about Suno Studio, the ability to add a brand new stem in the context of your existing song. Yeah. So if I add a new track here and I'm going to pull it up to the middle of the screen, um, I can select a blank region of time. In this case, let's see what happens if we add a percussion part. Um, and right now we're just picking from a pre-selected list of 12 instruments, but eventually we want this to be totally promptable. So you can select a region of time and describe exactly what you want to go there. Um, and we'll also allow you to add audio there. So you'll be able to hum or sing uh, right into your device to articulate what part you want. Um, okay, looks like we got our percussion stem back. Let's take a listen. Okay, that's a percussion stem. Not the most creative. It looks like we have another option. Let's check it out. Cool, so a little clap. How about the humming apart or singing apart? Let me show you what that looks like. Right now, it's a little bit of a multi-step process. If I go ahead and I create a new track, I can actually record a new part directly on here, and then I'll be able to cover just that region. So let's find a part in the song that we want to add something. Cool, so let's get, I feel like this last instrumental bit could use like a trumpet solo or something. Yeah. So let me see if I can do this here. I'll pull in some headphones because when we're recording audio, yeah. we don't want to record the song right back into the mic. I hear it. Right now we've got recording tucked away behind these three dots, but I expect we're gonna change this to be in a more intuitive location. Uh, by the time most of the people watching this video get to Gosh, use the product. This is early days. This early is, days, this yeah, this is a beta early access preview V0.3.0. Cool, so that will be our part. Bravo, ah. bravo, very good, very good. Thank you, <laughs> my best performance to date. Um, okay, looks like it's all loaded in. I also suspect that there might be some timing issues here because I recorded right off my laptop speakers. So let's just hear this. Yeah, it looks like it's a little bit late. And by the way, to nudge this track, I'm holding command while I drag it, okay. which turns off the grid, lets me get really fine tuned with where I want to place this. Very nice, very nice. Cool, so that timing's working now. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn on the original, um, the original instrumental and I'm gonna select this whole region of time, which includes the original track plus my additional recording. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the create form and I'm gonna drag this region right onto the create form. And you can see that it says Ooh. preparing my audio selection. Wow, this is cool. Yeah, wizardry. So yeah. it's rendering out this portion of my timeline. It's gonna bring it right into the create form. So now we can listen to this. I'm going to ask for a version of this that's still going to be at the same project tempo, but I want to hear solo 
trumpet and I'm going to add brass just to really ensure that I'm being understood here, drum and bass. So it understands kind of what genre and tempo we're operating at here. And I'm going to go ahead and click the create button. And at the top of our workspace, we'll see that these songs populate in and Suno's going to give us a version of this with a trumpet solo. My hope is that it interprets this vocal melody that I've sung as a trumpet. Right. So let's preview the vocal that I just recorded with the track. Pitch perfect. Close enough, I think. <laughs> um, and here are the covers that we just got back. Let's take a listen. Oh! oh yeah, that'll that's do. Pretty good. <laughs> okay, let's listen to some of the others. Also very good. So that chord changed in the background, but it's not gonna matter because I understood the assignment and it gave us that trumpet solo that we needed based yes. on the vocal. So we'll listen to one more as we let the stems uh, load from that one. Okay. A little more subtle. More subtle, exactly. So that's actually nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this one too because I want the low octave version. I think that's a cool that's a cool like happy accent right there. And then let's grab the uh, stems from I believe it was this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the brass stem into the track, and that's as simple as drag and dropping from the side. And let's find the section we want. It looks like it's right here. Yeah, that'll do. Nice. So I'm gonna align that right there. Let's mute the original and let's let's hear how this sounds. Oh, yeah. And then you go lower here. Yeah. So this this cover didn't capture the lower octave, but the other cover did. So let me let me grab the brass from here. I can drag in um, maybe it. So sometimes it thinks that trumpets are woodwinds. I, I think see. maybe because saxophones are woodwinds and it mixes those things up. Yeah, that's that section we want. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this in. <laughs> okay, fudge the note. Love the note there. This is amazing. This is amazing. Thank you for demonstrating. Of that. course. All right. Thank you so much for walking us through Suno Studio. This is a major leap forward. If you have any feature requests or ideas that we should consider building into Suno Studio or any questions about what we talked about during this video, please leave those in the comments below. I know I personally will be reading them. The rest of the team will be reading them and we'll take them seriously. Also, you can let us know what you've been enjoying about Suno so far. And make sure you're subscribing to the channel for more tutorials and deep dives into what's coming out on Suno, as well as some amazing musical collaborations that we have coming up. But until then, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.